What can we do to make Canada better? Let's find out. But before we do, if you love books and the stories behind them, please subscribe to my channel. Interviews are posted the second and fourth week of every month on Tuesdays. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. I am so excited my guest today is best-selling author and acclaimed journalist Mark Bulgach. Mark worked for the CBC for over 35 years. He is the recipient of numerous awards. His previous books include That's Why I'm a Journalist, That's Why I'm a Doctor, and the best-selling Extraordinary Canadians, which was co-authored with Peters Mansbridge. Today, his latest book is on our discussion table here. Oh, there we go, Inspiring Canadians. It is a collection of inspiring ideas and stories from 40 brilliant Canadians and their visions for the nation. It was published by Douglas and McIntyre. Welcome, Mark. Welcome to All About Canadian Books. Thank you, Crystal. It's great to be here. How are you today? I'm feeling good. How about you? I'm excellent. The sun's shining, so can't complain. Great. So, Mark, you've a lot of work has gone into collecting these inspiring ideas and stories. Can you tell us a little more about, about this collection of stories? Sure. Uh, the uh, idea in my head, uh, which is how most books start, I guess, <laughs> was to appreciate Canada. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to write a negative book. And so when I was kind of kicking around in my head a, a book, the original working title, if you will, was How to Make Canada Even Better. Yeah. Uh, because I, I wanted it to be clear that I didn't think Canada was a terrible place mm -hmm. and it needed all this remedial work to make it good. Uh, I wanted it to be clear that I love this country mm -hmm. and that I think it's a terrific country, but it's not a perfect country. And so we can always do some things a little better. Mm -hmm. And I knew there were people in this country who know a lot about things more than I certainly know uh, on a lot of topics. And so I thought, let's find out you know, I, what we can do in this country to be better for everybody, uh, because I've done well, right? I have no complaints about my life. I really don't. Uh, but not everybody is like me. And even people who are uh, like me should understand that uh, Canada hasn't fulfilled its entire promise to each and every one of us. So yes, it's a great country, but we can probably do things a little better and, and let's find out. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, going through and reading the stories, like I, I just, I, I'm just amazed. And I kept thinking, you know, where did you start, Mark? Like, how did you, start? how did you start? Like you cover so many issues, you know, from indigenous, mental health. How did you start? What was your process? Well, as you said, I'm, I'm, I'm a journalist. I mean, I was yeah. going to say I was a journalist. I am a journalist. Yes. And, and once, and so I, I, I watched the carousel for so long and I saw the issues that came up over and over again. Uh, all you have to do is follow the news and you can see mm -hmm. what's important in this country and where we're falling down and where we might be able to do better. And so that's, it wasn't very hard for me to think of topics yeah. Uh, finding people is another issue, but finding topics in my head was not very hard at all. And then I wanted to leaven it a little bit. I mean, I didn't want a book uh, that was just problem after problem mm -hmm. after problem. I thought that might be depressing, even though the book has solutions, not just yes. problems. Um, but I thought just as I did when I lined up the national. So when I did the national, the it, it's easy to get into the story after story about terrible things happen you know this terrible thing happened today thank you now another terrible thing happened today thank you then another terrible thing happened today so i didn't like that kind of newscast either mm -hmm. and we so i we always looked for other things 
uh, news about science, news about health, news about uh, discovery, news about space, news about arts and crafts and, and all that, you know, what that really is a mirror of life. And it, 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 that's what we pretend to be on a newscast, a mirror of the day. And most people don't have terrible lives. I mean, it's not, it's not one terrible thing after another. Uh, and so I, I looked in those fields too, in, 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 in like, why is it important that Canadians know history? I mean, no one's opposed to it, but why you, why shouldn't you know? Why, why, why is it important? Uh, you know, I, we have, a, I have a comedian in the book. And again, that's not because we have a problem laughing. It's because <laughs> I think we should know that there are people out there who give it really serious thought and, and understand why it's important that we laugh in this country. So the book has, yes, all those, it has a lot of what most people would see as the problems of Canada, but it, it, I've tried to also inject some of the normal part and then the best parts of Canada and see how maybe we can make those even a little better. Yeah. And I, I really enjoyed that as a reader. And I loved how in your introduction, you said that the, uh, you know, after talking with everyone, the ideas were still rattling around in your, in your head. Um, what's rattling the loudest right now? Oof, you're asking me almost to choose between my children here. It's uh, ah. <laughs> there's a lot. Uh, yeah, I mean, there I is. Found, yeah, what I found is exact. Is look every every story, every bit of the book, every chapter, whatever, is about fifteen hundred to two thousand words. So it's it's certainly not a master course in anything, right? Yeah. It's it's kind of like a newscast, a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> not very deep, but a lot of this. Uh, <laughs> And yet, in that short period of time, I think there's something always that I didn't know, or yeah. that I had, I may have known it, but I didn't think about it very much. Yeah. Um, and, and so there's, one, there's something like that in every one of them, I think. So choose one, sure, I'm happy to choose one. Um, my, the conversation I had with um, Jill LeClaire of the Space Agency, uh, who's in charge of Canada's manned space program. Yeah. Uh, and that's so why I, you know, I challenged him with the idea that a lot of Canadians and a lot of people around the world think we're throwing money away when we put Canadians in space or, or, or contribute millions of dollars to the space station. Like we have, as you know, the cliche goes, we have plenty of problems here on earth. Why in heaven's name are we spending hundreds of millions of dollars in space? Why are we doing that? And he had a good answer. I mean, he had a couple of good answers. He had an answer that, a very practical answer, that people talk about wasting money in space. But as he pointed out, it's not like we're putting dollar bills on the top of a rocket and, and spending it out into space, that would be sending money into space. What we're doing is we're putting money on earth for research mm -hmm. and to, uh, and to understand things. It's not like we're just throwing money out there. We're, the money is going to Canadians in most places to do the science, to do the research. So that's another way to look at it, right? From his point of view, we're not throwing money into space not at all that's not what we're doing and his other answer maybe the more inspiring answer is that it's what we do as human beings we explore yeah. right we, we don't just sit here and say the world is this big the world can be so much more and it's in our nature to go and find it and there's the inspirational part yeah yeah and, you know, you can't help but thinking after reading your book, like to get a collection of people sitting around a dinner table, I'm sure there'd be a lot of very interesting dialogue. What have, what's been some of the dialogue that readers have come back to you about after they've read your book? Well, in, as, as with you, a lot of people are impressed by the range uh, yeah. Yeah. that there are all these people out there. And, and, and the Canadians were so... <laughs> We don't give ourselves enough credit. Um, yeah. I mean, we don't seem to know that we have all these smart people in the country. <laughs> it's, it's really quite surprising. Like we, 
again, it, we are so close to the United States. We are yeah. just so submerged in their culture mm -hmm. and in everything American that we, some living in their shadow, which is almost literally what we do, mm -hmm. but we live in their intellectual shadow as well. And we, we fail to appreciate what we have, that we are different, uh, but we're not second rate. We have a lot of, we have first rate. And, 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 and what people are who read the book, I think, you know, what, the, what some of them have told me, and I think if people haven't read it yet, will get is some sense of pride that we don't take back seat to anybody else. We have brilliant minds in this country. We have people who think about things and who solve things. They don't just endlessly work on a, on a, uh, a treadmill that goes nowhere. They accomplish things and they, they work every day to make things better for the rest of us. And that's, I think, an important message in the book. It is. And, you know, I so enjoyed reading your book, Mark. And I'd have to say, very similar to you, it's still rattling around in my brain, too. So, and I like that. I really like yeah. that. So, Thank you so much for being a guest on All About Canadian Books. I so appreciate your time. It's been such a pleasure. Well, thank you. I've enjoyed it. And for our viewers, I'll put links down below in the description box so you can purchase a copy of, and I'll hold it up again. Oops, there we go. Inspiring Canadians. Oop, there we go. 40 Brilliant Canadians and Their Visions for the Nation. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Please come back in a couple weeks because I'll have children's author Andrea Curtis and illustrator Emma Fitzgerald, and we'll be speaking about their collaboration, City Streets Are for People. Thank you for watching. Bye.